Welcome to the Naughty Fisherman. Today's video is going to be going over the various types of bobbers that are out there. I'm going to be showing you guys some examples from my own tackle kit. Um, this one's going to be kind of a lengthier video just because there are so many different types of bobbers. Um, as we go through, I am going to go ahead and give you guys some price points as well as locations where I found these. Um, each one of them I did look up on different basic areas just to see what we were looking at price-wise versus location-wise. Um, some of them differ depending on location and some of them just differ depending on the quality you're getting. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. So as you can see in front of me, I have a ton of bobbers. I think at last count this one had eight bobbers in this frame. So for this first part, we're gonna go ahead and just do this. Yes, I know, I just cut it down the four. Reason being is this next section is going to focus on these four in particular. Let's go ahead and get started. If you're still hanging with me after that stupid stunt, congratulations! Moving on, um, the reason why I want to focus on these four in particular to start with is these are the four I would heavily recommend if you're just getting in the bobbers. Um, these are going to be your cheapest options as well as the easiest to use. So on the left we have our classic red and white bobbers. They come in a variety of sizes. I think the largest I've seen is three inches, which is huge. Um, to be honest, these are the most common ones you're gonna find out there. Um, they come in different size variety packs. Uh, they come in different price points. I picked up a 10 pack at Bass Pro Shop of assorted sizes, which basically gave me every size I need and sizes I didn't want um, under the sun. And it was, I believe, two forty nine. So for two fifty, you're getting ten bobbers of different sizes. Gives you a lot more options and a lot more flexibility. The cool thing about these ones is you can easily attach them to your line at any given moment, um, just by pushing your thumb here and pushing down up here. It'll expose the clip right there. You'll put your top of your line here, let that close on it, then flip it over. Keep your line tight. Don't drop it like I just did and push on the top part right there. Keep making sure your finger's against that clip. The bottom part will show up. You'll put your string against that, or your line against that, however you want to refer to it as, and you'll drop that down on top of it. What that does is it locks the line against that little ridge right there, as well as up here, keeping your line tight against the bobber, ensuring that this won't move up and down your line or get tangled or any of that fun stuff. Sad part is it took me a while to figure that out. Please don't be like me. Like I said before, these ones come in a variety of sizes. They are relatively cheap. Um, you can find them on Amazon. You can find them just about anywhere. Um, Bass Pro comes in a lot of different sizes for cheap prices, different variety of packs. Um, you can find them at Turner's. You can find them at Big Five. Just about any major sporting goods that has a fishing section. Um, the price will vary as well as the qu uh, quantity and the brand. Next, I wanted to go over this little doohickey. Um, this one's another iteration of the ones I just showed you. Functions pretty much the same way. One major difference though. Actually, two major differences. One, this is made of foam. So, a um, little bit more durable. It is susceptible, as you guys can see, to markings and uh, damage from both abrasions and just crushing as it is foam. It is not going to stand up to a high amount of pressure before it crushes. Um, the other difference is, if you guys can see this little metal thing here, it's weighted. So whereas the red and white ones require a weight to get them out further, this one, you can still use a weight, but it does not require a weight to get it out far into the water as there's one already attached to it, which is a nice little convenience. Um, these are also very inexpensive. I got a six pack of these at Bass Pro for four bucks. So six and four dollars. That's under a dollar per bobber, which not a bad deal considering the fact that it helps uh, alleviate some of the frustration from trying to get out further into the water. Not to mention, it's pretty dang bright. You're gonna be able to see this thing in the water easily and you'll also be able to see when it disappears because the fish just grabbed it. Um, like I said, only real con I can think of is it's foam. Um, it may not be as durable as others. And last but not least of the clip-ons, 
we have our handy dandy little rattle bobber. Um, the only reason why I would, oh, if I can get it to go down again, <laughs> the only reason I don't use these is because I don't know how to use them. No, um, the only reason why I tend to stay away from these is one, I like them a lot, so I don't like losing them or breaking them. And they aren't exactly easy to get a hold of, considering the fact that they run out quickly and you only get two per pack. Um, this one is actually also not as easy to find as you might think. Um, I think the only places I've really seen them are online, as well as um, Bass Pro in store. So I actually got these ones online at Golden State Fishing Custom Baits. Um, shout out to that team. They do amazing stuff over there. Um, they sell them in a two-pack for $2.50. So like I said, it's $1.25 a bobber. Cool thing about these, though, they rattle. So one, they'll get your bait out there. You can actually see it. And two, the rattling will give it a little bit of an attractant to the fish, and it'll get their attention. Whereas the other ones, not so much. So pros, one, they have sound, so they attract. Two, they're decently bright, so you can see them. Three, they're easy to use. Cons, well, let's face it, you don't get as many of them as I would like, only because I am a bull in the china shop. And two, um, they're hard to find. All right, let's move on to the next section. So this section is actually going to be what I like to refer to as the slip class. Um, so all three of the ones you see in front of me have the functionality of a slip bobber. One of them literally is a slip bobber. Uh, if you guys have seen one of my other videos on how to rig one of those up, you'll have recognized this one already, the Thinkfish, which is a 15 gram um, edition of it, which is basically a half ounce. So heavy duty little sucker. Um, the other ones you might not recognize are the Thill and the uh, Slipcast from South Bend. So let's go ahead and get started with the thick fish, think fish, whatever you want to call this thing. Um, so this one, like I said, they aren't exactly the cheapest of the group. Um, I believe I got these on Amazon in a five pack for $13.99. Um, they don't get much cheaper, uh, at least in decent quality. The biggest problem with these in stores is a lot of times, I don't know if the kids are playing with them or what happens, but a lot of times I'll get a, I'll see a pack and I'll go to buy them and either the top part or the bottom part will be snapped clean off the bobber. At which point you have a nice little bobble that's fit for a Christmas tree, not really for the water. Um, these are great little versatile ones though, especially if you're going for deeper uh, waters and trying to get the fish that are in deeper areas mainly because you can put a heftier weight on the bottom here, have your bobber stop up here, cast this out, and you can essentially set this for five to 10 feet. Um, reason why I say that's a little bit more advantageous than the clip-ons is because the clip-ons, you try and cast that with a seven foot leader, you're either snagging somebody in the butt, you're gonna snag yourself, or more than likely your hook's gonna get stuck in your tackle and you're gonna watch something go flying in the lake you don't want flying in the lake. Or best case scenario, you break the line. Either way, not a great time. But these are great little things. They're just a little more expen on the expensive side and a little bit more um, of an intermediate tool to use. I don't say go not get them because um, I do like using them and I've had great success with these guys. Um, but I would say these are more of an intermediate tool. Next, we have the Thill, which is the Wobble Float. Um, or wobble bobber as they call them online. Basically, it's a weighted slip bobber. So the bottom of it, actually, if you guys can see this, I don't know if you guys saw that, but there is actually weight in the bottom here that's gonna help this stay upright in the water. And that is the one thing about the slip bobbers that um, the other bobbers don't really handle well, is that these will tell you if you have your bait set up correctly or not, because if it's on the bottom, this thing's gonna go sideways, which, immediately tells you you have a problem or if it goes sideways you wrap it around your line and pull that sucker in get it set up again now the cool thing about these is as it's going to float because of that weight at bottom every time the current hits it it's just going to do this which is going to make your line move back and forth and it's going to induce prey action in your presentation which the fish love and might entice them to strike a little more often than with the regular bobber now the only bad part about these is they are expensive um, I haven't seen them go in above, I 
one or two pack in my experience. Um, I found them in Bass Pro. I get mine on Amazon, um, but they also run about five to eight dollars. So like I said, not exactly cheap, um, more of an intermediate price range. Personally, if I was just getting into it, I would steer clear of these until I was um, better acquainted with them just because of the price point. And if you do break your equipment like I do, that's going to hurt. So just keep that in mind when you are looking for your bobbers that um, you want to balance your cost versus your skill level versus your destructibility like mine, which is not good. Anyways, then we have probably one of the more versatile ones of the slip bobber class is a slip cast spin float. From, at least that's what South Bend calls them. I just call them a water bobber to keep my sanity because let's face it, that is way too many words. Um, these come in a bunch of different brands. Uh, I know Double X Tackle has a version of this. Um, you can really find these in any sporting goods store. They're only going to come in one to two per pack usually. I think that's the most I've seen is three. Um, now, the problem with these is, like I said, quantity of two to four and you're paying about six bucks you're paying a little over a dollar a bobber the good thing about these though is that as a slip bobber you can rig these in a multitude of ways um you can actually even use a fly with these i've seen someone using pistol pete's uh flies behind one of these and he was just absolutely killing it on trout so if you want to use a fly on your spinning reel without having to use a fly rod this is one way of doing it. You can trail it behind it. You can fill, fill this up with water, which is where it gets its name from, by popping that little compartment open. Fill that with water. That is your weight at that point. Cast the sucker out and bring it back slow, and it'll give you that presentation of the fly that you otherwise can't get with the spinning reel. Like I said, one of the cons, though, is it is translucent, so if you're like me, expect to lose these because you will step on at least one. Painful memories. But the other problem is the price point. So if you guys are interested in that, these are more of a um, little bit of higher price point to get into bobbers. Um, are they useful? Absolutely. Do I want to keep buying them as I break them? No. But again, that is up to you. Okay, so for those of you who have made it this far, um, this is going to be the more advanced version of the bubbles only because of the price point and how you set these up and how you have to rig them. Um, looks pretty innocent enough, right? We got the little foam float here, as well as the little bubble float here, and you're going, hey, but we've already seen one of those. Not yet, you haven't. So if you've already seen one of these, go ahead and fast forward past this point, but this is what they call an adjust a bubble. Um, the reason why I saved one of these for last is these are expensive. Now, there's a very good reason why they're expensive, but they're expensive. From my experience, they literally come in a one pack. And when I say they're expensive, at Bass Pro, which is the cheapest place I found them, they're four bucks a pot for one bobber. To put that in comparison, the next most expensive was a little over a dollar a bobber. So you're probably going, well, why the heck do I want that then? Simple, this will eliminate the need for any leader or clipping or essentially weight to get you out there. What this does is it operates off of a, um, basically a rubber system. So this little middle part here is rubber. So what you do is you pop this open, fill that up with water, close it, or do this in reverse steps of what I just said. Then you're gonna put your line through here, through the top, get it all the way through to the bottom. And then you're gonna open this up. Like I said, you can do the first step last. And you're gonna go ahead and keep, keep twisting. What this does is it will literally anchor this to your line with no other tools than that little than the little rubber core right here. It will grab onto your line and lock this in place. So when you're casting, it's gonna look like that. Now, I highly recommend you do not store it like this or store it in water. As it is rubber, it will deteriorate, it will snap, and you will have wasted six dollars or close to it. Um, yes, I speak from experience. I've lost two that way because I was an idiot. Um, like I said, these are great little things. The only cons, like I said, are their price point. Um, getting used to using this with no weights attached, unless you want to attach them down here to get your bait down lower. And being able to see it in the water. 
because like I said, it's clear you throw that in the water. I really hope you're going to be active fishing this because otherwise you're going to lose track of it. Like I have a lot. Pretty sure I've lost fish to this. But they are great little bobbers. They're just expensive and hard to keep track of. Now, you're going, well, why is this one included then? It's just a foam float. So, this one's actually probably one of the cheapest per bobber price out there. I mean, technically. Um, a four-pack of these at Bass Pro will run you $2. You're thinking $0.50 cents a float. Or if you want to get really ambitious and buy a 36-pack of them at Bass Pro, $9. Which point you're looking at about 40 cents a float, I think. My math isn't exactly on par. Now, if you want to get them online because you don't want to go into the store, it does get a little more expensive and the magnitude of about $4 more expensive, I'm guessing, for convenience of shipping to you. Um, at Amazon, you can find these. Now, to give you the name of this float, it is a trout magnet from Leland Lures. Now, if you've ever used trout magnet, you already know exactly what I'm talking about. This one has no weight to it whatsoever. It's literally a foam float with a stick in it. That's basically how this system works. Now, you're thinking, why does this even cost money? Why don't I just go make these myself as I drop it on the floor? The reason why I say that is because when you pull this out, you can literally put your line through here, have it against this far side, put that plug back in, and you just anchored it with no other tools needed. So this is probably one of the easiest to change out or adjust on the fly without damaging any of your line, having to cut anything off, anything like that. So, I mean, technically speaking, if you really want to, you could turn this into a slip bobber as well. I just realized that. Things you learn on video. But like I said, this one's mainly meant to be anchored against here and used especially in streams with a uh, trout magnet lure which is a whole different video. But these are great little floats. The only downside is you're gonna have to use small weights to get them out further because they have no weight by themselves. So they will just kind of fly with the wind if you cast into it, which will completely screw up your reel. But inexpensive, nice starting point, just a little tricky to get, to use, get used to. All right. Well, that concludes our little trip down Bobber Lane. Um, Yes, yes, I know. Horrible pun. There was a few things I wanted to go over real quick um, as we conclude this. I would primarily base what bobber you're going to use off of what you're willing to spend and when you get started, as well as how much you're willing to lose as you get started. Um, when I first started fishing with bobbers, I went through about two packs of the 6 to 10 bobber variety because, one, I'm horrible at keeping track of my tackle sometimes which sometimes I mean all the time. And two, again, I am a bull in the china shop. I broke about six of them in my first two months. Not a great track record. Um, if, they, if you're anything like me, I would definitely recommend the uh, weighted foam bobbers, the rattle bobbers, or um, the red and white to get started. They are easier to replace. Sad that I actually have to say that. They are also easier to use and get used to. Um, you will have to add weight to the red and white and possibly the um, rattles, but the price point is worth it, in my opinion. Um, if you are already a little more used to bobbers, um, I would look at, and maybe if you're willing to make the investment, the uh, adjust a bubble. It is probably the most versatile of all the bobbers. Again, my biggest complaint is it comes in a one, one maybe two pack, and it's expensive. It's like, we're talking four or five dollars per bobber. And I'm just not willing to put that much money into something that I can either deteriorate from the inside or step on and break from the outside. Like I said, numerous ways for that to go wrong. And you have to keep the storage correct. Otherwise, the rubber will deteriorate and break and become worthless. I've lost two of them that way. I know. Um... If you are looking to get into the slip bobber game though, um, my personal favorite is the Thinkfish or Thill. Um, they are both really good companies. Um, yes, they're a little pricier, but you're getting quality units and you may not run the risk of having the slip bobbers top or bottom snapped off by um, uncaring hands in a store. So always look into those options as well. Just 
kind of keep an eye on the price point there. Beyond that, I did want to mention that even though I am putting the link for Golden State Fishing Custom Baits um, Rattle Bobbers in the description below, I did want to mention I am not sponsored. I just really like their products. Um, they do make great quality stuff. But like I said, not sponsored. Um, just go ahead and check them out, though, if you guys got a time. They are a local company, family-owned. They're awesome. Beyond that, I don't have any much, much else for you. So... Tight knots and tight line, guys. Till next time.